Here we have a typical rotor balancer frame, complete with accessories. This setup should be readily available from your VSI supplier, however self-builds can often perform just as well. The better the quality of this setup, the easier balancing will be achieved. The frame should be placed out of the wind on a level surface and shimmed to remove any movement. The shaft and bearings should be checked to ensure they sit level on the frame. The rotor needs to be as clean as possible. This means removing any fitted wear parts and the removal of any build up or weld splatter. All balance weights should be removed from the rotor, only the balance bolt and nuts should remain. Using suitable lifting equipment, the rotor should be manoeuvred onto its perimeters. Care should be taken to avoid surface damage in the balancing area and it is good practice to manoeuvre the rotor onto a piece of rubber or other suitable material. The internal bore of the rotor hub, or boss, should be cleaned to remove all rust, burrs and any protective coatings. Likewise, the balance shaft taper should also be cleaned to ensure a good mating surface between the hub and shaft. The balance shaft should then be placed carefully through the rotor hub. The balance shaft should be locked into place, ensuring that there is a good mating fit with the rotor hub. It is good practice to use a length of timber to aid in securing the shaft. This reduces both noise and the risk of damage to either the rotor or the balance shaft. Once the shaft is secured to the rotor, place the rotor onto the balance frame, taking care not to damage the bearings. Using a straight edge, mark three lines on the rotor top plate from the centre to the outer perimeter, ensuring each is aligned with the balance weight bolts. Once complete, rotate the rotor and allow to settle. Once the rotor has settled, identify top dead centre and place a mark, then rotate the rotor again. If the balancer is correctly set up, then the rotor should continue to settle in the same place. If the rotor settles in a different position to before, then the balancer setup procedure needs to be completed again. If the rotor settles close, but not quite as before, then the bearings may require cleaning or even replacing. Once the rotor settles in the same place, identify the closest balance bolt to top dead centre and mark it as number 2. Then identify the second closest balance bolt and mark this as number 1. To recap, the rotor settles in a different position to before, then the balance setup procedure needs to be completed again. The rotor settles close but not quite as before, then the bearings may require cleaning or even replacing. Once the balance frame has been set up correctly, top dead centre has been established, and the balance weight bolts numbers 1 and number 2 have been identified, it is time to start applying balance weights one at a time on bolt number 1. As balance weights are slowly added to bolt number 1, the position of bolt number 2 will move closer to top dead centre. Keep applying weight to bolt number 1 and allow the rotor to settle each time until bolt number 2 reaches top dead centre. Once this point is reached, secure all of the balance weights that have been applied to bolt number 1 before progressing. Rotate the rotor until the position of bolt number 2 is at 90 degrees from top dead centre. On releasing the rotor, it will attempt to return to its original position. It is time to start applying balance weights one at a time to bolt number 2. As weight is slowly added to bolt number 2, the rotor will move closer to a state of balance. Keep applying weight to bolt number 2 until the rotor no longer moves. It is at this point the rotor is considered balanced. Once balanced, secure all balance weights applied to bolt number 2 before removing the rotor from the balancer. Prior to removing the rotor, it is good practice to check that the rotor is in balance by systematically turning the rotor and randomly stopping it, holding the rotor until all vibration has ceased and checking 
that the rotor no longer moves. Finally, if insufficient weight can be applied to a balance bolt, then the following options should be used. The first option is to cut and bore a length of flat bar equal to seven balance weights. Repeat the balance procedure starting with the flat bar. The second option is to weld a length of 20 mm square bar to the inside of the rotor between the balance weight bolt and the troll plate holder. Then repeat the balance procedure. 